What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this one I'm gonna talk about what's going on with SPY, NVIDIA, Tesla, the QQQ, and a couple of tickers out there. I'm gonna break down some very important things about the market and what you should be watching for going into today and some big news that came out that's affecting the market so far. But before I do anything like this, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so make sure you take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. We sign up for Mumu with the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account. You're guaranteed five free stocks with a $50 cash reward. The offer ends in just 13 days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's talk about the market. How are things looking so far? So overall, the market is continuing to weaken and it's looking relatively weak for the pre-market. But the question is, why is the market looking this way and what is going on with it today in terms of data and etc.? So first off, there's not really any major data coming out, just some oil rig data in the morning, but that's about it. Nothing too crazy. And then later on, I just want to remind you all that we have a crazy looking options chain. We have almost or very close to 1.5 million uh, calls basically expiring today. And we have just under just under about uh 2.9 million puts expiring today max pain is 439 so the market makers are incentivized to pump the markets back to 439 but there are no guarantees with all the negative news that just came out for today the put to call ratio is 2.04 so we're going to be watching these things very carefully now what's going on with the markets i'm going to try to be kind of quick because there's a lot there's lots of information the dow is looking bearish futures are looking bearish the indexes are looking uh bearish so far all the different indices the s p 500 the nasdaq composite they're all looking bearish so far continuing to drop they've been dropping more and more so be very careful uh the market is or at least the news is comparing target with walmart they have different guidances whereas walmart's was strong targets was actually relatively weak for the next year and then looking at something else that's interesting bitcoin is dropping as much as nine percent uh it's continuing to drop after some big news about spacex selling their Bitcoin, not to mention other news about the overall market in China. And the big news right now for the market is not just the Fed maintaining a hawkish stance, but also what happened with Evergrande or Evergrande, however you say it. This is some very, very big news because this is the second largest developer in China that has filed for bankruptcy. And this is going to affect, like I said in my video from yesterday, the U.S. investments, the U.S. investors that are heavily invested into China. And also, you can't forget about the fact that uh, they use bonds as collateral, so they're going to lose a lot of money. And news like this will have a negative effect on the USA as well, right? China is our biggest trade partner. Whatever happens to them can affect us, at least to some extent. And right now, it's not good news for them with the fears of contagion and etc. That is not good news whatsoever. Uh, we're seeing some big news from stocks like Ross, which had decent earnings, and Xbox is dropping. Lots of Chinese tickers are dropping so far. So those are the big market uh, movers, at least the biggest moves of the market so far. So now let's look at SPY. I'm going to try to be kind of quick right now because I'm kind of low on time. Uh, right now on SPY, it's looking relatively weak. Uh, it's continuing to down and I had to readjust this trend line. And we're watching the support right here at where this trend line just so happens to be. It's trying to like bounce a little bit. For us to turn bullish, we need to see this thing break above 434.8, then get above 435. If it manages to do that, then there is some hope for it to get back to 436.5. All the way up to 437 438 and then you know max pain 439 which i'm not i'm really doubting we're gonna pump that much as we have this resistance line already around like 437 for the day so i highly doubt it's gonna go that high but it is a, you know it's on the table but we want to watch these doubles just to be safe if we're bearish we're just going to continue to down trend on this trend line or we can even break below it and start flushing down to 431.5 if that fails us then like there's 430 but we have strong support here we tend to see lots of buyers here so most likely we're going to see buyers step in around here. If not, you know, we have like 429 much lower levels that could be tested if we end up breaking, but I'm not going to talk about that breaking unless it actually happens. For now, we're currently sitting at about 434. So we're going to be watching this all very carefully. So what do I see for the market right now? We're trying to hold this trend line, but we're still looking relatively weak on this downtrend. Uh, not looking the best. We could also draw another trend line right here. Uh, we have this resistance that could be like forming right here on SPY. So not looking too good so far. And we're going to be watching this channel now. It's very, very tight. Could SPY try to get above our resistance at 434.8? See, we have this confluence right here of resistance, right? We have this trend line right here. We also have the previous blue line as resistance. Could we break this and get back up to 435 plus and start pushing? Or do we end up failing and starting to downtrend? So they're both possibilities be open to them because of the 
OPEX expirations and all the options. But I just want to note the current trend looks more bearish. We're continuing to make lower highs and lower lows. The odds do favor us coming down to 431.5 to 430 now, as we're currently looking very weak. That is more probable, but watch for confirmation just to be safe. For Tesla, okay, looking at Tesla, uh, the bullish case for the stock is going to be this thing trying to break out. We could also draw this resistance uh, kind of like this. I would say it looks a little bit more like this, but we're going to be watching to see if Tesla could pull this off and try to get above 215. Right, we have another confluence on Tesla, this 215 resistance. If it breaks this 218 is a possibility to fill the gap. If we could hold above 215 for an extended period of time and break above the 20 EMA 216.5. If Tesla could break 216.5, then 218 should come. There is some potential for that, but we need to see a breakout first. And even if it does try to do that, there are no guarantees it's going to hold because it's going to always reject and come back down lower. If that's the case, 215 is going to be either support or resistance depending on where we are. If that fails us, we're going to be back in this channel. And this channel is going to likely take Tesla all the way down to 212. If that fails us, there's going to be 209 to 210 as support. And if that fails us, there's 207 to 205 so not looking too good it looks more bearish than bullish there's a good chance this is going to continue to downtrend and get very close to 210 at the very least the odds do greatly favor that as it's looking relatively weak but just be open-minded to these resistance levels just to be safe because there could be a lot of manipulation due to the options chains that are coming out so make sure you watch these levels carefully uh for the triple q i think i went to the wrong one the triple q this is also not looking that good we have some bad news that came out Basically, we rejected and broke below 357.6. This was a historical support for the triple Q. And unfortunately, it has broken, which is not the best of signs. So I know it's a little hard to see, but on the chart like this, you can notice that we got a very nice bounce off 357.5 in the past. Uh, you can see right here, a very historical bounce. This was some nice support. This is also a breakout level and we just broke below it. So now we're testing support at 355. If we balance, there is going to be some resistance as well at 357.5. Uh, and also 356 has a little bit, uh, we're going to be watching these resistance levels very carefully. If we continue to downtrend, then we could see this thing just continue to slide down to much lower levels. And if 355 breaks, we're going to be watching this thing come all the way down to 354. If that fails us, we have ne the next support at 352.5 to about 352. We're going to be watching this very carefully. It's just a matter of does 355 hold or do we break below it? If it breaks below it, this is going to be a very, very bearish signal. So watch support and resistance very carefully. It looks more bearish so far. It looks like it's going to end up into like the lower 350s. But just to be safe, watch it for confirmation. For NVIDIA stock, uh, looking relatively weak, it's actually continuing to downtrend. You're going to be watching for a potential backtest of this trend line before it breaks lower. Watch 425 is support. Does this hold or not? If not, we have 420, 416. The list goes on to like 410 or so. We could get a backtest of this resistance at, at about 428 or so. If that breaks, there's 430 to 433. And if that breaks, it could maintain and get back into this like channel, but no guarantees until we actually do it. And what typically happens when we break it is we get a backtest and we just continue to sink. It looks more bearish from a technical standpoint, so the odds do favor the downside, but just to be safe, see how it reacts to supporting resistance. All right. And then I just want to mention that when it comes to the market, Apple is going to be a big one to watch for. It is currently looking weak, trying to hold 172. If it breaks below 172, we're going to be watching this thing come very close to 170. If that fails us, there's 168. If it tries to balance, watch 172 as support, then 173.16 is going to be resistance followed by 174 exactly. So we're going to be watching which way Apple goes. That's going to be dictating the market, at least to some extent. And do what you have to do, guys. Watch support and resistance. And just know that the technicals do look more bearish so far. But watch for your confirmation levels just to be safe. All right. So I want to make this video quick. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, everyone. Have fun today. Watch the market. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you and peace out.